this is trainer David coming at you from somewhere in my secret location up uh, in the Pacific Northwest. All right, I'm just in quarantine and I am uh, at home in my basement. But anyway, uh, this is going to be uh, Motivation Monday and here we go. Our agenda here for today is we've got the tip of the week. We look at some uh, sales shout outs. And then we will have, uh, well, it won't be voicemail tips. It'll be customer service tips here this week. So our tip of the week is that we are moving. This is the last time that uh, we are in this slot at the 10 Pacific. We'll be uh, moving to 8 o'clock Pacific to simply to better accommodate a, you know, a nationwide audi audience. It'll, uh, that change will be next Monday, May 4th. Not sure who it is that's uh, going to be doing the training that day. It's not myself. But, uh, let's see. Not sure who it is. Anyway, all right. So let's move on to uh, some uh, sales shout outs. Well, it looks like uh, that for the week of uh, the 20th, the big uh, products were all NatGen. Uh, you know, short term was NatGen, Limited Med was NatGen, Accident, and Critical Illness were all the NatGen products. However, the dental um, was led by Emeritus. So who were the money magnets there? Okay, looks like Bill Cox, um, Max Weinstein, and Cadia Santa Maria, all on that short-term medical. Not a whole lot of limited medical going out, going out, but uh, Cadia um, led in that area. Then an accident. Um, I'm going to hopefully not butcher it too bad, but Kazar Reyes. And Alexander Anea uh, led in the accident uh, plans. And I just uh, had noticed, uh, and I brought it up for Medicare. We had uh, Steve Ortega. Uh, Steve literally sold um, NatGen. Uh, it's for his, uh, you know, Medicare supplement. And then uh, Dan Hanich uh, led in the Medicare Advantage sales. So a uh, good job to, to all of those and uh, see who uh, tops it all next week. So today's topic, I thought I'd uh, kind of limit it uh, to six, you know, good customer service tips for insurance agents. I, mean, I know literally books have been written on customer service. So today I thought I would just try to highlight you know, a good six tips that we could all use and uh, see if we can't work that into, you know, our daily lives and our customers will definitely appreciate it. And we'll see if we can't, uh, you know, keep our business a, a little better with that. Just wanted to note that uh, customer service uh, is often what sets competitors apart from one another especially uh, in the um, highly competitive business like insurance. I mean, we are very people-centric uh, business and good or great interpersonal skills are a must. I mean, it's, it's all about the relationship and uh, uh, in keeping the insurance business. Maybe, uh, you know, filling the need was what got you started, but you're gonna have to keep that, uh, customer on the books uh, for as long as you can, because if you don't, they'll simply go to somebody else. So tip number one, let's take a little interest in the life of your client. You know, if you can form a more positive image with them and make it more likely uh, that they'll call you for insurance needs or uh, recommend their friends and families uh, to your business. So take the time and get personal. Okay? Uh, ask about the, you know, interests in the families and hobbies, you know, you know what is it that, uh, that they do? And I can't overstress that you wanna keep notes in this because 
you're going to want to bring this up again later when you talk to them. Okay? Uh, you tell me that your nephew is on a basketball scholarship. I'm going to ask how that nephew's going on the next time I talk, talk to you. Or you tell me that, uh, you know, Fido uh, is not feeling well and had to take him to the vet. I'm going to be asking about Fido on the next phone call. And you also want to share a little bit about yourself, especially if you have similar interests. You know, maybe you both like to go camping or you both like to go fishing or whatever that particular item is. Um, you want to share a little bit about yourself there. Uh, that way uh, you can stimulate some, you know, something that you have in interest. Uh, we're not talking about making real friends here, but we're just talking about doing something to seal that business um, that when they think of uh, you and they think of insurance needs, you're the one that comes to mind. Okay. So get to know your clients and you really want to just make an effort there. Okay. Like I said, and notes, I just can't overstress the notes because you want to keep all of that um, available so that when you do talk to your customer, uh, you can start off with, uh, instead of jumping right into business, you can take a few minutes, uh, get that little personal touch in there, and uh, that will really make you stand out and uh, people will think that you're really concerned about them, which you should be anyway, but um, you're trying to treat them as more than just, uh, just income. Okay. Number two, so this is uh, just doing the right thing. I don't know how else to call that. You want to identify uh, their need and cater to it. So they're going to tell you exactly what it is uh, that, that they want. So you got to do your homework, uh, find the policies and insurance product that pro products that best fit that needs, and uh, they'll appreciate the individual attention. Okay. So in other words, we're not going to, uh, somebody has a, you know, whole lot of prescription needs maybe that short term even though you know it's cheaper may not be the way to go for them it's not going to meet that need that they have especially if they're taking a lot of very expensive medications it's almost driving you back to uh you know one of the uh, major medical plans and hopefully they've got that qualifying event that's going to let them you know, purchase them uh, but you just need to pay attention. They're going to tell you what they want, uh, but you're going to have to interpret from there uh, what they tell you they want to exactly what it is that they need. Okay? And uh, like I said, they'll appreciate it um, when, when you get them taken care of. No bad mouthing. Uh, you, you, here's the thing about that. You, you just want to avoid speaking negatively about other clients, other insurance agencies or organizations. You just never know how potential clients may be connected to them. If a client asks you about someone or another business, give them an honest opinion, but keep it all fact-based. You don't want to, uh, you, you want to talk about the facts not about the opinions. And um, there's always those uh, taboo things we want to stay away from. Uh, I should recommend to everybody that you stay away from any kind of political talk. You stay away from, uh, you, know, uh, you know, your opinion of, you know, the current president. You just don't know which side they're going to fall on. And that can mean your business. Okay, we just not, don't need to talk about those. You don't know what their opinion is. And unless uh, we don't want to talk about opinions at all, all we want to talk about are facts. And, okay? you know, oh, maybe saying that uh, you would think that something else is more appropriate or something else might be a better product to fit the need. Uh, and but I would never say that, uh, you know, that's a bad product or that's a bad way to do it. I would just suggest that there might be a better way, uh, maybe a less costly way or something like that uh, to help the customer out. Uh, basically, though, is that you don't know what their relationship is 
when they asked you about it to begin with. So don't speak negatively, only talk in facts. Keep in contact. Life changes and it's not just at the renewal time. Occasional uh, courtesy call to your clients can help you identify and serve any new insurance needs that may come up during the year. I've set up a callback schedule. My schedule that worked very well for me uh, was to call about two weeks after the sale, you know, uh, and I would always uh, you know, ask them, did you get like your cards or, you know, I'd have, you know, something that I would ask them about uh, if they had any problems. Um, and always on any of these calls, we want to, uh, we're going to ask them uh, for a referral. So we want to be sure that, that we're doing that, that we're going to call about two weeks after the sale make sure that they got their cards or whatever information is being sent out. Maybe it's not something that comes through the mail. Did they have a problem going online and printing out the card or just get those kinds of little questions in there um, and, and provide that service, you know, show them uh, where to go, uh, maybe how to set up their, their account and print out the card themselves. Okay. Then I would call again about two weeks later and ask, have you used the plan? Have you gone to the doctor? Have you filled a prescription? Were there any problems? Uh, in plans like a, an HMO plan where you have to select a doctor, did, did you, were you able to get in to see that doctor? Um, I don't know how many times after they tried to go and see the doctor, they found out that the doctor, even though that they were in the HMO, was just not accepting any new uh, patients at that time and you needed to find a new one. I mean, there was all kinds of different little things. So I would call again after two weeks, um, and I would just ask that if you use the plan. And then after that, I would always uh, solve any problems that had come up, you know, get that kind of stuff out of the way. And uh, on each call, I would ask, you know, if they had any questions, is it all working out, any new medications, and who do you know that could use my services? Ask for that referral. So at that point, um, especially for those where everything is going smooth, you know, there was no problems, everything's going great, I would get them down to calling them once a quarter. And then each quarter, I mean, it would just pop up on my call list. So, I mean, you just put them into the CRM and it would pop up on whatever day I'd assigned. And I assigned all of these way back and right after the sale. So I made a sale. And then I put in my next uh, calls for the rest of the year. So as the doctor working out, any new medications, any problems, and ask for the referral. So that was my, um, my contact system to, to keep in contact with them. And at the end of the year, I would just reschedule them for the next, uh, you know, once a quarter they're, they're on out. And I'd always have a chance to talk to them during uh, the AEP uh, so that if they needed to make a change, uh, that was the time and that's what we would do. Number five, proofread all written communications. It's a poorly written um, email or text to a client make you appear unprofessional and ignorant. Read over everything you write twice, and then read it again before hitting send. Uh, two things that will come back and bite you every time if you're not careful. Did you refer to an attachment? Is it attached? Okay. Just, uh, I don't know how many times we've all done it, and it's embarrassing, especially when they're the one that first noticed and questioned where's the attachment so that they have to actually call you back or email you back questioning where the attachment is. All these things make you appear unprofessional. Okay. And number two um, that always comes up with this one is uh, autocorrect, okay? Again, it can be very embarrassing depending upon the word 
English is a tough enough language with words that uh, are pronounced the same with totally different meanings. I always give you the example of there, T-H-E-R-E, and there, T-H-E-I-R. Okay. Uh, I can always figure out that you used the wrong one, but I will start off with trying to make the word that you sent me fit. Okay. You sent me uh, there when it should have, you know, T-H-E-R-E, when it should have been the possessive there. And I'm trying to figure out how to make that fit in there because you used the wrong one. Before it's like, oh, they meant the other one, even though that's what they use. And so again, if you appear unprofessional and ignorant, if it's my kids that send it to me, I laugh at them and tease them about it. If I got it from somebody at business, I probably would just stop doing business with them. So proofread uh, all written communication. Save yourself from a lot of heartache. And my last little tip is don't transfer people to voicemail. Okay. Uh, find a live human being for them to talk to. If the right person is unavailable, take down their information and make it a point to get the appropriate person to return the client's call. You just don't want to, you know, you're frustrated, they're frustrated. The last real thing that you're going to want to do is just send it off to uh, uh, somebody else's voicemail. Um, they don't appreciate it, and it could be that, that it's a client that you lost. Okay, so those are kind of my uh, my six tips. Just trying to keep it limited, uh, you know, for a Monday morning motivation, and uh, try about uh, putting those into practice. And I'm sure that uh, each of those would help out with, with your business. Questions? Uh, you can always uh, email me at training at ahpsales.com. And I would be glad to help out with uh, any questions that come up and for just about anything. There's no, uh, no reason not to uh, you know, either give us a call or an email and we'll help take care of that. Unless anybody uh, has a particular question, uh, that's all I've got for today's uh, Motivation Monday. Hope you found it useful. And let's see, I just don't see any questions coming up in the chat box. So if um, you do, just give me a chat. Okay. All looks good. So you guys have a successful week. And uh, we'll talk with you next Monday.